Whether you're here to learn or just brush up on the basics, you're in the right place. There is a lot to cover in the topic of backups, and this will be the first episode of many to come. So pour that cup of coffee, or make that cocktail, whatever will get you in the mood to literally protect the most important aspects of your life. So let's get into it. As always, everything I mentioned will be in the comments below, uh, including links which will be affiliate links, and that's how you can support and sustain this channel. So thank you in advance for using those. My goal for this episode is to start with the fundamentals of backup and how Fuji recommends to our own clients how to backup. And then I'm gonna show you the simplest way to set up that first backup on your Mac so that you can avoid disaster the next time it hits. Because it's okay to cry, but I wanna do my part to make sure that those sweet tears aren't because of data loss. And believe me, we've seen data loss tears and it's not good. In Fuji's book, you don't really have a solid backup plan until your data is in three places. And that is your Mac, an external drive, and then a third location which could be a drive or maybe in the cloud. And Dropbox should not be one of those. And that's because I'm trying to avoid Murphy's Law here. And when people think they're backing up through Dropbox, it's when disaster strikes that they realize the files that they wanted most or are looking for weren't actually put into Dropbox. So Dropbox is good and all, but I don't consider that an actual backup destination. But three places. Cool? Now, you can modify that up or down based on how much risk you're willing to take on. So if you wanna take on less risk, you are more than welcome to go with four or five or more copies of your data. And in terms of that third, fourth, and fifth copy of your data, we'll definitely be covering those in future episodes, and we'll pop those all into a separate playlist for backups. Now, in terms of this episode, let's go back to the fundamentals and what I consider a solid backup strategy. So in an ideal situation, you're gonna have your data in these places, your actual computer, and then what we call a local backup, which means a backup that's located in your home or in your office that's easy to get to regularly, and that in the event of a lost or stolen computer, it is local and easy to get back. The third is going to be offsite. So whether that's a cloud service like Code42's crash plan or Backblaze, links to those below. Or if you have too much data uh, to back up to the cloud, like uh, in video production or uh, photography or any, any industry where you're dealing with a lot of data, you might literally need another <laughs> uh, backup drive in another location, whether that's friends, family, business partner, uh, even a, a bank's security box. And another type of backup is what we call a clone. However, that starts to get a little bit more custom and that's why we'll cover that in a different episode. Okay, so let's talk about setting up that first backup, a local backup. The first thing you'll need is a drive. Now, there's lots of options here. You can get some kind of sweet action drive like this GTEC that I've been using for the past year. The brand, the type, the shape, it doesn't matter. I don't even know where this came from. My goal for you right now is to get your first backup in place. Heck, I still use a time capsule here in my house. May the time capsule rest in peace as Apple is not making those anymore, but that's another topic. Okay, so you've got your drive. Step one is done. Now for step two, you wanna pick a utility that is going to back up your drive automatically, okay? Data is not something that I like taking risks with, and that's why I don't like being responsible for remembering to back up. I'd rather hire a robot to do that. So there are a lot of tools out there, but my tool of choice for setting up your first backup is Apple's built-in time machine. Now, for you time machine haters out there, that's fine. Leave me some comments below, but I'm telling you after 10 years of doing this as a company, we have had very good success with Time Machine. So to set up Time Machine, you're just gonna go to your Mac, open up System Preferences from your Apple menu, select Time Machine, and then choose Select Disk. 
go ahead and click your hard drive. And if your hard drive is not Mac formatted, your Mac will prompt you to erase that drive. Now proceed with caution, make sure that everything on that drive <laughs> uh, is okay to be erased. If not, you need to look for another drive because that will be completely erased um, in order to use it with Time Machine. Now, if it's already Mac formatted, it will not erase your drive. And if you do have data on that drive, then you can still use Time Machine alongside that data and not erase it. Not to get into the weeds here, but I really don't recommend that because that extra data that's on that drive is not being backed up. And the whole point of this is to have your data in multiple places. So if you do have an external drive where you're storing a lot of extra data, that is not a backup. I recommend you purchasing another one, they're cheap, link below, to back up this drive and your Mac drive. And yes, Time Machine will automatically include any additional external drives that it detects. Which brings me to my next point. You can click on options in this same window so that you can choose what to exclude or include. Now by default, Time Machine doesn't exclude anything. That's a double negative apple. And I actually prefer it that way. I don't recommend excluding anything from your backups because Murphy's Law. Just back up everything. Storage is cheap these days and you'll thank me later. That is it. There's literally no other options that you need to worry about. Now, one question we get a lot is how far back in time can I restore, okay? And how often is Time Machine backing up? So Time Machine is backing up every single hour, and that's why I recommend keeping it plugged in as much as you can. Time Machine will do is to continue backing up until your drive is completely full. And then once that drive is full, Time Machine will start pruning off the oldest backups, okay? And that is completely normal. So if you want to have like three, four, 10 years of backups, well, then just get a giant drive. But for most people's use, just having six months to one year of backups is a pretty good window. So the standard four terabyte drive these days will absolutely suffice. Now let me go back to a detail I mentioned a second ago. Time Machine will back up every single hour automatically in the background. However, it'll only do so if your drive is plugged in, okay? And this leaves an opportunity for Murphy's Law to come into play. And so, like me, if you are not good with remembering to plug in a drive regularly, here's a couple of things I would suggest. First is to just use Siri to remind you to plug in your drive, say, once a week. In my opinion, that's still not a good solution. I really want my backups to be working all the time automatically. So what I've done at my home and what I recommend a lot of people do is to get a network connected drive. However, we're here for the basics. So if you've got a drive, just get started with this and try to keep it plugged in as much as possible. Okay, so that covers the basic local backup that I recommend for everyone to have. If you don't have one or if your family doesn't have one, let me tell you, they make great stocking stuffers. So consider that for your next holiday party. You're welcome. In another episode, we'll go over the importance of having an offsite backup. Spoiler alert, you can use Code42's crash plan or backblaze to do that, but we will cover that in a future episode. So when it comes down to it, buy a drive, plug it into your Mac, set up Time Machine, and save those tears for a good book or a rom-com. You know what I mean. Guys, if you liked this one, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know. Put them in the comments below. And also, sign up for our new Fuji newsletter at fuji.com slash newsletter. We're gonna start uh, creating some new content just for that. So get ahead of the curve and sign up now so you can get our first newsletter that goes out. So thank you so much guys for following along as we are in constant pursuit of the best tools and techniques from the field. We'll see you next week.